If you're here for the first time at our Montessori Leadership Town Hall, welcome. We host these every single Thursday. They're always free to join. They're always at the same time from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, and it's just a safe space for Montessori school leaders and administrators to come together and discuss various, various school leadership topics together. We know it can get a little bit lonely when you're at the top and a lot of people are always asking you questions. It's nice to have a group of people who are in the same position as you um, in the Montessori space, which is a very unique space. Uh, in this week's town hall, we're going to be focusing on talking about Montessori retention, specifically helping families complete that three-year cycle. This was actually a highly requested topic, um, so I'm glad to be able to, um, you know, touch upon it, um, and hopefully everyone here will take away some new strategies or be able to share some solutions that have worked for them in their school. Here's just a brief overview um, of what we're going to be going over um, I'd love for us to get to know each other. That'll be on the next slide. But these town halls are very much a collaborative space. It's an opportunity for you to connect with other Montessori school administrators, ask each other questions, um, share solutions when it comes to school leadership. So throughout the call, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question or share an idea, or you can also utilize the Zoom chat. We'll keep an eye on that so that all questions are answered. Um, and feel free to share any ideas and strategies throughout the call um, all of your ideas are very welcome. Um, we're also going to talk about when you can start educating and educating, I mean, um, parent education, how early on you can start really nurturing families um, when it comes to retention, because you really have to lay those expectations from the very start when it comes to looking at things long term and hoping that families will stick with you for those three year cycles. Um, we'll talk a little bit about educating and nurturing families, some strategic approaches you can take there. We'll also touch upon platforms for parent education. Nowadays, in the digital age, there's many ways that you can reach parents and educate them constantly about the benefits of Montessori and also the unique benefits that children will receive when they complete those three-year cycles, specifically that kindergarten year, which we know is very crucial for the primary program. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about hosting events specifically for retention, what these may look like. I'll share some examples of content slides for presentations um, for events specifically about retention in the Montessori space. And we'll also talk a little bit about building a community that um, really lives your mission because that's ultimately what's going to help you with retention in the long term. And hopefully we'll have time for Q&A and discussion at the end. But again, as I said, feel free at any time in this call to unmute yourself, comment on something, share an idea or ask a question. This is very much a safe space for you all. All right, to, um, to go ahead and get started, I'd love for us to all um, to get to know each other. So feel free to introduce your school and share why you joined today's call. Um, you can use the chat um, if you're unable to unmute yourself, so um, no worries there. I'll give um, just a couple of moments for everyone to share a little bit about themselves. You know, are you looking to improve retention? Are you struggling with retention during that final year or kindergarten year? Um, are you here to offer your ideas and strategies? So I'll let everyone kind of fill a little bit of something in the chat. <laughs> Should I start? Sure. Okay. My name is Grace Yanakakis. Um, I am the Director of Faculty and Program Development at uh, the Keystone Montessori School in uh, North Chelmsford, Mass. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I think, I think most most Montessori schools struggle with the kindergarten competition of the free public school and sort of the, you know, balancing and engaging with parents um, in that conversation around what's their long term, you know, plan for their child for their child and and how much do they actually know about Montessori? Because, you know, it's really at that, it's at that point where, you know, parents start thinking about real school, you know, and what are the you know, what are the skills they want their children to, you know, to master and who they want their kids to be. So, and whether or not Montessori is going to be able to fulfill all of that. Um, you know, yeah. So, so I've been, I've, I've been in a number of different schools and, um, and, you know, there are different approaches, you know, to, um, to how I go about this. This webinar is, com is so timely because we are actually having our kindergarten overview um, tonight. So I figured I would log on, um, see if there were some good ideas to inspire the conversation tonight and, um, and see if I could offer something as well. Awesome, thank you, Grace. Thanks for sharing um, a little bit about yourself and your school. 
I see here in the chat we have a couple. Um, I see here Emily Pinto from Flosswarm Montessori School looking how to improve retention with strong competition from a great Illinois school district. Um, Jen from Bellevue, welcome. Here's Vicki, head of school from Amelia Island Montessori School. Um, oh, she's here because my presentations are always so great. Thank you so much, Vicki. I'm glad you find them helpful. Chris here says um, he's an enrollment coordinator and I work with Victoria Bell Railsford, um, director also at Bozeman Montessori. Excited to learn about your tips and ideas of retention. Awesome, happy you're here. I also see Sarah from Stepping Stones, always looking for help and advice to do better with parent education and retention for the third year, absolutely. It's that kindergarten year that's tricky. Um, Sarah Dozman, hi Sarah, welcome back. I know you've been at our town halls before. Um, looking for ideas for retention as well for the third year um, children's house as well as our elementary program. Mm -hmm. It's that competition with the public school systems where things get really tricky. Um, Julie um, Douglas from Roseville Montessori, looking for um, um, competing with a traditional system um, and their new all day kindergarten. Okay, um, Carly Ford from Hollis Montessori. Welcome Carly, welcome back. Looking forward to learning how others encourage and foster the third year with families, absolutely. Um, Lindsay here, welcome. Thank you for introducing yourself. Looking to brainstorm on some strategies for the kindergarten year. Anastasia here from um, Virginia, looking to hear about retention. Okay, so I think, you know, we're all kind of on the same page. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. I see a lot of things about that three-year cycle, a lot of things about the kindergarten year. Um, it's great to have a big group together. So please feel free and welcome to utilize the chat or unmute yourself to share your ideas. Cause I'm sure across so many Montessori communities, we have different approaches and someone has found something that has worked for them and it might be helpful to another school. All right, so to get started, I really wanna talk about when parent education truly begins. And it really starts at the very beginning of your marketing process, of your communication process and the enrollment process. If your goal is to have committed families that are living your mission and that see the value of Montessori truly, then the parent ed journey starts very, very early on. So it's important to take opportunities to offer value from the start and really set those expectations early. That's really a key for a long-term um, retention strategy when it comes to keeping people on for that three-year cycle. So I'll talk a little bit about how you can do that. So how can you offer parent ed resources when families are just starting their school search journey? So this is all, all the way in the beginning, maybe when their children are really young, they're looking for programs in their area, they're still not 100% on Montessori necessarily, but you can actually start nurturing um, parents on you know the value of Montessori as well as selling your programs as three-year programs um, by providing educational resources directly on your website and on your brochures, in your open houses, et cetera. So very early on in the admissions process. So here we're marketers. So we believe that good marketing is good communication and it can really help you with getting the right families on board and getting them to really agree with, you know, a, a, a three-year journey. So you can think you can do things on your website such as um including resources, blogs, and so much more in order to nurture and educate these families from early on. So when you have great content, it allows you to educate uh, families on their school search journey. So from very early on, they're diving deep into the content on your website to learn and see the value firsthand of Montessori. They might not even be 100% set up Montessori at this point, or maybe they are, but you have a bunch of content um, that is providing them with some background, a foundation, and some insights as to the value of Montessori. You can explain and break down what sets Montessori apart from other programs, traditional, especially traditional programs and public school programs, because um, it's very easy for a parent to just sign their ch child up for a public school system. This is something that they're familiar with. It's open and free. But what we offer in the Montessori space is unique and something that cannot be found in the public school system. So that's something that we need to continuously be educating both prospective and current families on. Montessori is not just a solution to a child care need. You know, while it's great to fill up your classrooms, you want those families who look at Montessori as 
you know, almost like a lifestyle or a, a foundation for their child's future. They're not looking at it as, oh, I'm going to put my child in this program until the public school system opens up to them. This is very much, um, you know, setting a foundation for that child and for them to complete the three-year cycle is crucial if you want that foundation to be, you know, as strong as, as possible. Uh, and you can include learning opportunities on your website and social platforms. It's free to do this. You can always post on your website for free and on social media for free. You can constantly be um, communicating the importance of the kindergarten year, the value in it, and the value in a life, um, in a program-long Montessori education. So those full three years are crucial. So good Montessori marketing means educating your prospective families. Let's dive deeper into the specific strategies that your school can be doing to do this. So number one is your website content. You can probably go in and ed edit your website content at any time. It doesn't cost you any money to do this. And I highly recommend, you know, looking at your website content and seeing what kind of messages you're conveying to prospective families. Um, it's a unique learning opportunity to learn directly from your school about the values of Montessori. So something that you should have on your website is a what is Montessori page, and you should be using approachable language here. So um, in the Montessori space, we're speaking Montessori every day. We use a lot of terminology that people who've been in our community for long enough might be familiar with, but prospective families might not know. So make sure your content is approachable and that you're really breaking down um, the lifelong benefits of Montessori and what happens when a child completes a program, how much um, that really builds a strong foundation for their future. Things like blogs and articles, I highly recommend investing time. If there's someone in your community who's a great writer, utilize that skill and have them publish and write blog articles for your website. This can be a great way to constantly be educating families. Um, those parents who are engaged, you know, might keep up with your blog regularly and other prospective parents might just check out your blogs to learn more about Montessori directly from you, which is important. Other things like lead generators, you can um, offer free resources on your website. It's a great way to get contact information, but off also offering um, educational opportunities directly on your website. So you're just laying those seeds early on. That's important if, you know, you want to grow a healthy plant that's going to be with you for the long run. Um, so this is just thinking from very early on. Another thing is testimonials. Um, I really recommend looking for testimonials of people who completed the kindergarten year or that three-year cycle in, and ask them how um, how that experience was for them. You know, was it worth it to keep their child in for kindergarten year? And you can include that on your website information because really what's so beautiful about the kindergarten year, and we see it as Montessorians, we see it every day with our children, is that that's the year that everything comes together, all of their hard work in the primary program, and as well as in other programs, such as elementary programs. It's those final years where they become the teacher, they become the master. So it's really important. So you can get some testimonials on that as well. I also always love to add a variety of supporting information, such as data, studies, and success stories. You can have emotional success stories and data-driven ones to appeal to all sorts of families, because everyone measures success differently. So here are just some samples of the content that we include on our sample website here. And we always like to include a little section on kindergarten included and why kindergarten is included in the primary program, because this is not necessarily the traditional approach, but it is the Montessori approach. And we talk about this. And so this is directly on the website. So anyone in their school search journey can see this immediately. And then you can bring it up again when they come in for a tour and talk about, you know, kindergarten is actually probably one of the most crucial years in the primary program. And you can say, this is why we put it on our website. It's really a three-year program. So you can start um, setting those expectations from early on. Here is our Montessori approach from our What is Montessori um, page so that parents can understand a little bit more about how our approach is different from traditional schools. I think it's important for um, you to have parents in your community who are entering a partnership with your school and understand your unique approach and philosophy. Um, this will, you know, build lasting trust. And hopefully these are the families who see the value and then hopefully don't walk away when, you know, public school becomes available to them because they really see the work that you're doing. And you can also talk a little bit about what is unique about your specific school and your mission. It's always important to have a mission aligned families 
So really be purposeful with the content that's on your website and across all of your marketing materials, whether that's a brochure, um, even on your social posts, make sure that you're you know putting in some effort into communicating your philosophy, your mission, and your programs as three-year programs. This is just example of a lead generator that you can have as well um, to educate your family and just to increase engagement on your website. So th there's lots of fun ways to encourage learning on your website from early on. And here's just a sample of our blog. And of course, you can write a blog about the importance of the kindergarten year, and you can keep republishing that every year. Um, maybe around the, the time leading up to re-enrollment, it would be a great time to publish that blog. So close to this time of year. Um, but it's always great to be nurturing and growing a blog and creating content for families to continuously learn directly from your school. And of course, testimonials. And be sure to include those testimonials about the three-year cycle and what parents found success specifically in that kindergarten year. Any questions about um, school, your school website or what, you, what kind of content you can be implementing? Again, this is from very early on um, in, in that family's journey and that family's um, process with you. So um, you can always lay that, that groundwork. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about parent education on social media. I think social media is meeting parents where they're at. Realistically, nowadays, um, most of the parents in our community are members of the millennial generation, although we have um, parents of, of many generations now within our schools. But this is a, a generation that's specifically um, very connected on social media. Um, they might be using Facebook or Instagram more than other apps. And so this is a great space for you to utilize in order to share a little bit more about the benefits of Montessori and specifically the benefits of that third year and the three-year cycles or a, an elementary program for a family who's looking to continue their Montessori journey. So you can post continuously on your social media. Remember that you own your own platform, you own your account, you can always post on it for free and it's a great space for you to be educating families. I recommend posting about Montessori parenting. So post, um, you know, parenting tips at home. It's always great to be sharing parenting tips because usually when people are able to implement some of the Montessori practices that we use in our classroom, things like positive discipline in their own home, and they know, oh, wow, this is what my child is experiencing in the Montessori classroom. And I see how successful it is in my own home. Um, you know, they might not be receiving that in a traditional school setting, so they can see that value for his firsthand. So it's always great to offer that. Um, posting success stories is great. So again, those testimonials and social proof. Educating families about what goes on in the classroom. So just showing things about the materials in the classroom, um, projects, things like that can encourage families. Post about the importance of the kindergarten year and especially leading up to re-enrollment periods. I would really highly recommend that. This is a great time to post specific testimonials about the kindergarten year or just, you know, it being the year of everything coming together and all of their hard work coming to fruition. Allowing families to explore and see what Montessori is really about. You can utilize social media to smash those misconceptions about Montessori and, um, you know, give them a real insight about what authentic Montessori looks like. And of course, you can share educational videos and graphics on socials as well. And this can help you as just an additional platform for educating families. Email nurtures are another way that you can um, you can kind of get people on board with retention. Uh, we might have used email marketing early on in the admissions process, but it also works with communicating with your current family. So you can always have a list of those families who are getting prepared and ready to enter their kindergarten year. And you can create a small email campaign of maybe five emails to get them ready for the re-enrollment period and just provide um, some additional information as to the benefits of Montessori. Again, this is free to do. Anyone can send an email to their email list for free. Um, so think of it as, you know, a way to market to this community of parents, those third year um, parents for free. Um, it's personal and it provides content that helps parents make informed decisions Oftentimes, the parents that do leave before that kindergarten year, it's because we just didn't get to them enough with, um, you know, showing them the benefits. Because if, you know, we if they had been able to truly see the benefits, they might have been a little bit more willing to, you know, trust the process and stay on. 
other times, unfortunately, it's it's more of a cost um, challenge or they might not be able to, they, they're just wanting to go to a free public school and that's understandable, but you can speak to their pain points during an email nurture and try to show them value first. Um, so it can always be helpful for the retention process. This is a sample of um, the email one in our email um, nurture template on Montessori Thrive. So for those of you who are new to marketing or Montessori Thrive members, we have an email nurture specifically designed for retention in the kindergarten year. You can download the template and you can change it around as you want. But um, it's, a, it's a great way to, to kind of get people on board with um, staying on for it that third year. So um, I highly recommend looking at that. You can tweak it. Um, and it's great. And at the end, what I like to do with this email nurture is encourage parents to come in for a one-on-one -on -one meeting to talk about um, whether their child, you know, whether they want to stay in the kindergarten year and just to discuss, you know, what it's like and what to expect. And you can have that meeting one-on-one -on -one and you can lead them into that through the email nurture. So that's just a sample of something you can do. If you need educational resources to help you with um, educating families, building that groundwork for retention and mission aligned families. We have a variety of resources available for you to download and for you to use for your website. We have Montessori answered one pagers. So these answer all of the frequently asked questions about Montessori and the Montessori approach. We also have one specifically on the importance of the kindergarten year, which I think is one of our most downloaded ones. <laughs> so this is, a, it's clearly something that schools are, are looking you know, into and investing um, resources in. White papers can also help lead generators as I showed on um, the website content example and also blog ideas and sample articles. You can download those on MontessoriThrive.com. I recommend you checking them out. We have a whole section on um, parent education resources and also on retention resources. Any questions so far? I just wanna make sure I'm stopping and seeing if anyone has anything to add or any, any questions or comments. I just like to mention that um, I know your Montessori answered one pagers. I use them in our parent ed series, and I've gotten a lot of compliments from parents saying this is really great because it's just very short, but it's very direct. It covers a lot. I just think that that's something uh, not that necessarily has to be the parent ed series, but um, but I've had very positive comments from parents on that. Um, so it's it's a good tool I think um, to use uh, anytime, but. But as I say, I've, I've gotten the most luck with actually handing it to parents and saying, you know, you really should read this. This is this is what we kind of covered tonight. So it's just reinforce it kind of thing. And just another thing, too, on the testimony, I think that's wonderful. And I, I, we found that if we actually have a parent come into our kindergarten um, night meeting, that has a big impact because it's a parent actually talking firsthand to them. They can ask that parent questions and it's not just us saying it's great. The parent is actually saying, I would, you know, I put both my students in, or we had an instance once where they put the older one in, but the they didn't put the older one in, and then they put the younger one in. And actually they came back a couple of years later and were speakers and saying, really wish they had done both. I um, mean, they see a real difference between um, the children, the, the two of them. And it was very, really interesting to the parents to listen to that, like, Wow, it really made a difference. And, you know, and the parents said, yeah, it really did. So just some uh, tidbit of information. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing, Jenna. I'm glad the one pagers are helpful. And yes, those those ambassadors and that social proof is crucial, especially for those parents who experience the kindergarten year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi, hey, Camila. Hi, Wally. Um in terms of the nurturing emails, I mean, we have we have in the past focused primarily for generating or, or uh, interesting the in, uh, creating interest in the prospective parents mm -hmm. but not so, so much or not at all for uh, the third year retention and some other things do you suggest that we uh, send them these retention letters let's say for third year uh, several times with different contents that would be useful or just i mean it can't be a one time deal because they just listen to it once or see read it once and forget about it right but at the same right. time, you can't be sending the same mess, same let's say uh, uh, document document associated with it with the nurtured email 
same content each time, right? Because it becomes duplicative. So what are your right. thoughts? So what what I'm understanding your question is, this is not an email um, nur nurture template that you would use over and over again. This right. is one that you would use specifically for a group of, of parents. So if you're using something like a CRM, you usually have tags for families so you can categorize them and keep track of them. So assuming that you have, you know, a list of all of the parents who are currently about to enter their kindergarten year. So these families have children in that in that primary program about to enter their third year, you know, say about a month or two before re-enrollment time, you can trigger an email nurture specifically to educate them about the importance of the kindergarten year. You would just be sending this email to them once, these email nurtures once, and then after that, it would not repeat or or replay. It would just go to that specific group once. And once they make a conversion or they're already enrolled in the kindergarten year, you can remove them from that list so they're not getting the nurture. Um, but it's just an additional kind of safety net to just make sure those parents are hearing your messaging about um, the importance of the kindergarten year and that hopefully you're you're just, you know, providing that for them in an additional way. Again, it's free to do. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. And I think in some ways it looks like that uh, email, nurturing email, should probably end with uh, maybe an invitation for a one-to-one -one meeting. Yes, right? absolutely. That's that's exactly what I suggest doing is the final email nurture to be like schedule a meeting with us today to discuss, you know, the benefits or the opportunities for your child to experience the kindergarten year so we can answer any of your questions in person. Because I think that's really the most effective way, hopefully, to seal the deal. Any other questions or comments? All right. I'll keep an eye on the chat. So don't, um, you know, feel free to ask a question whenever. So another thing you can do is market your program specifically as three-year programs. You can communicate this from early on, especially that um, primary program. Um, just discuss early on the importance of the completion of your program. You can put on your website, when you are writing your program information, you know, kindergarten year is the year where everything comes together. All of their hard work is, you know, really being fully realized when they are the teachers and leaders in their own classrooms. So you can offer things like parent commitment forms so that parents understand the importance of the three-year cycle. Um, if you have a wait list for your primary programs, you can ask parents to fill in a commitment form so that they, you know, you can prioritize spots for families that are willing to sign them and commit to a three-year program. Because again, what you're marketing and selling is a three-year program. It's not just, you know, a program until public school becomes available. Um, and you can discuss the importance of the full three years multiple times on your website, your program information. And again, on the school tour, I think especially on the school tour is crucial because that information really resonates so much more when they're hearing it from you in person and they're able to ask follow-up questions and engage with you directly. Here's a sample of a parent commitment form or a letter of intent. This is also available on Montessori Thrive if you want to download it or make any edits. Uh, but this is just an example of, you know, something you can do to really express that your programs, your primary program or other programs are three-year programs. Um, in this sample, there's a little expert here that's a little excerpt that says we are making a non-refundable reservation fee of $500 in recognition of our commitment to having our child attend through the third year. So if their child is not going to complete that third year, they're going to lose those $500 if they decide to complete that year. Those $500 would go to the first month of tuition for their third year. So that's just another way that you can ensure participation in that third year. Obviously, a parent might still choose to lose the $500. And, um, and, you know, go to public school for free for the rest of the year. But it's more about, you know, having something signed, having parents understand that this is serious. We were really approaching this as a three-year program and we require a commitment and a deposit in order to enroll your child in a primary program. Camilla, I have just one concern about this sort of letter. Mm -hmm. I may be totally off, but I think this could potentially be a turnoff for some parents because it seems like you're pushing it too hard. Um, um, I don't know. I'm just just my thought of the cuff. Uh, I don't know what other people think. I mean, it certainly it certainly might be. I think that if a school is really seeing a lot of drop off during that kindergarten year, this might be something that they can consider because ultimately the children are not benefiting from the full program. Um, if 
if they're not staying on board for that kindergarten year. So I think, you know, this is just maybe a little bit more of an extreme measure to take, but it's always nice to have someone, you know, sign something and understand, you know, that this is a commitment. I'd love to know if anyone on this call uses something like this at their school. I believe this is from one of the schools in our community that provided this really nice sample here of what they use. I I actually like this idea. Um, my biggest problem I have here at our school is that most of our parents that join us, you know, think of us more as a daycare mm -hmm. um, than a school. And I'm trying to change that culture um, so that they are committing to a school and the whole Montessori because, um, you know, most parents that inquire right now are like, I'll ask them on a tour, what do they know about Montessori and, you know, all of that. And they have no idea. They've just heard the name and they've heard that it's good, but they don't understand anything about this kind of commitment. So I think when you see it in writing, you're like, oh yeah, they're serious. And my child is going to get, you know, a, a good education here. So it's a hard culture to change though. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it, it, it really comes down to, you know, sometimes they, they need to sign these documents to really understand the scope of, you know, our programs. And this is not a, a daycare. This is an educational institution. This is a school. Um, I see here, Abby in the chat says, um, this approach sounds really interesting. Amanda, we use this at my old Montessori private school with great success. Great to hear that, Amanda. Carly says, we have a more, more of a verbal um, commitment and remind families that we only accept new CH applicants who commit to the three-year cycle. If older siblings do not complete the three-year cycle or leave at kindergarten, we don't accept their younger siblings. Okay, that's, you know, um, Chase Larman. Hi, Chase. Um, we utilize the deposit of intent and $500 deposit. It's a turnoff for some families, but for the most part, it helps families to understand what kind of program um, we are and the standards we hold. Absolutely. So, you can decide whether it's too extreme for your school or not, but if you are really looking to gain more mission-aligned families, this is an approach you can choose to take. I see here Chris says, we put info in our enrollment contract and collect a deposit for the third year, but I'd like um, a resource like you are presenting here. Um, again, Chris, all of these resources are available on Montessori Thrive. I'll put that link here. Feel free to also, you know, you can use the one here at the um, on the presentation as an example. This recording will be posted on YouTube later today. So if you want to reference any of the resources that were shared on this presentation, you can look at the YouTube video on the NATO Marketing channel later um, to revisit some of these. Um, Gabriella says, you're very fortunate to be full enough that you can afford to turn away families who wouldn't stay all three years. We do make it clear that it's very beneficial, but in the end, we're a, we are small and can't turn away parents. Absolutely. And this, this might not be the right approach for every community. So you have a lot of things to consider. And this might be something more if, you know, you, you've already started a wait list and you want to be a little bit more picky about the families that are joining and you want that commitment from them, then maybe you can take this approach. There are some schools uh, nationwide, at least I know of a couple of them, that are really well established, very, very well respected, who uh, require a one week, a one weekend orientation program before they will accept anybody. And so they go through everything. And, and so when the parents are done with their orientation program, they know exactly what they're getting into, what they have op the options and why the third year and, and why elementary and all that. But most of the schools are not lucky enough to be able to to get away with, with something which is uh, a good process, but I think um, you just can't uh, really, unless you're really well established and have an amazing reputation. Right. Um, I mean, that's an intensive parent education program for a parent who's not even enrolled. Um, right. Certainly something that would probably take a lot of work to put together and a lot of resources, but you know, that's a that's a way to ensure that those people who are signing up do understand the scope of what they're getting into. Absolutely. I like um, the idea that this also gives an incentive for families to stay through that year, to have that credit in the kindergarten year. Um, 
So I don't, yeah, I, don't, I was excited to hear about this idea because I hadn't thought of it. Right, because those $500, I think in the document, actually, it says that $700 will end up going to their first year. So the parent is mm -hmm. also gaining the $200 extra on the that mm -hmm. third year. So it's almost like a layaway for those parents, you know, who are going to stay for that third year. So yeah, especially as you know, when you're getting closer to kindergarten, and some of the factors are definitely like, you know, traditional public schools and the cost of private Montessori. Um, that that small credit could make a big difference. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It's two hundred dollars is you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a it's a significant oh. amount of discount, and yeah, you're getting nothing. that committed family for the rest of the year, so it's mm -hmm. it's well worth it. Any other questions or comments about um, what we've discussed so far? Any other ideas? I see here, Chase Larman also shares our contract also states that we that the deposit will be refunded if the family moves 35 or more miles away. Yes. And I believe a lot of schools will have um, a relocation clause or something like that. If the family ends up moving out of state, obviously they won't be able to come in person. So you don't want to penalize those families, but it's good to think about those things. All right, so my next topic here is gonna be focused on parent education events, because um, really this is what is going to be improving your retention is families who understand the benefits and aren't looking at your Montessori school as a daycare and are coming in and seeing um, and learning about your philosophy. So it's about bringing the family together and really creating a mission aligned community. So parent ed events are, are really important in the Montessori space. I don't think we see a lot of parent events in traditional schools or in public schools because usually parents know what to expect from them. You know, their kid's going to come home with homework and things like that, and they know what to expect. Um, they don't usually offer parenting support. But that's something that we in the Montessori space can offer, and we can constantly be making efforts towards educating our community. Um, parent engagement can really help build a stronger community. So you can plan events throughout the year focused on educating families. Um, think about what kind of events and lessons are going to allow them to see firsthand those benefits of Montessori. So how can they apply it at home and also what their child is learning in the classroom? And you can come up with ways to make these events accessible by offering childcare online. Um, you can do an online class or after working hours. We've discussed this at a previous town hall, so I recommend looking at the recording of that if you're more interested in expanding on parent involvement and parent events, because we had a really good town hall on this. Um, it's on our YouTube channel, but um, it's really going to help you with retention. Also, starting with a great tour. This is another thing that you would do early on, and this is kind of what usually sets um, your school apart from the rest and what will sell Montessori to those prospective families because when they come in for the tour is when we have the opportunity to wow them, to answer their questions. They're getting to see the environments and, um, you know, we have the pleasure of working in the Montessori space and seeing how beautiful our environments are every day, but to a prospective parent, it might be completely new. And it's really a wonderful experience to walk into a Montessori classroom. Um, it's a great opportunity to answer a lot of questions and express that your programs um, are not a daycare. They are a, a, you are a school and you're you're setting the groundwork for a lifelong love of learning. Um, so you, you can utilize your school tour to help families understand what they are observing in a classroom. So what are they looking at? What are these materials on the shelves? You can give them a brief overview. You can talk about, you know, the first year, you know, is, you know, when the child comes in. And then in the last year is when they leave as, as teachers. So you can talk about this early on so they understand it's a three-year program. Introduce the Montessori philosophy and answer any questions and also set those expectations and talk about how Montessori is a way of life and your school is going to be providing resources to both children and parents to thrive. It's very much a partnership. Um, your open house is also a great opportunity if you still host these. I know some schools don't necessarily do open houses as much post-COVID, but I think that we've moved um, past that far enough now where um, most schools are doing their open houses. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to share resources and provide more learning opportunities for these families. Um, you can also um, show how Montessori has worked with others. This is what Janet had mentioned. You can invite parent ambassadors 
or ex alumni to your school to come in and 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 help give a statement or a testimonial in front of other families and answer questions. That's usually very impactful. You know, when you tour colleges, usually who leads the tours is students. <laughs> so, um, it, it and it's impactful to hear about their experience at the college. The same applies for Montessori when they're hearing from families or students who have found success in your programs. It's that much more impactful to them. Um, you know, what support can a parent community expect once they join your school? So you're a school that's offering a service to children, but you're also, you know, providing a lot of resources to parents so that they can embark on this journey with you. Um, that's not something that they would necessarily receive from a daycare or traditional school. Um, and then of course, this is a great opportunity for you to showcase your programs as three-year programs again and talk about that face-to-face -face with people. Any comments or questions on open houses? I know this is usually a big event for people, usually more towards um, uh, the end of summer or early fall that we do, but every school has a different schedule when it comes to open houses. Um, I can share something that our school does. Sure. We don't really do traditional open houses, but we, um, we do something we call day of discovery um, mm -hmm. where we invite them, uh, currently enrolled families and prospective families to come and we go through each of our Montessori environments, uh, the toddler through elementary, and we usually share like a specific lesson. We go like really in depth into something in that environment. And in that way, we're kind of like visualizing for the families, the connections between the environments and the programs from toddler all the way through elementary, um, trying to really, you know, uh, reinforce the idea that this is all building on each other and that it's really important to stay through these programs. Um, so that could be like a creative idea to really like do some parent education and kind of flip the head on an open house. Um, so yeah. I love that, Abby. Yeah, you can, you know, we don't need to take the traditional approach of open house because we're not a traditional approach to education. So you can always come in and 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 just show parents what their children are going to be learning firsthand mm -hmm. in the classroom. And they're probably going to be seeing similar things in public schools and they're going to be able to tell and see the difference <laughs> when they see it. Yeah. In yeah, we definitely like market it as a chance to like get to walk through your child's shoes and see what um, the classroom experience is like from from their eyes. Absolutely. I see here in the chat from um, Sarah Dozeman, we offer um, we offer many tours open three times a week. Do you feel like an open house is necessary when there are so many opportunities to come in for a more personalized tour? Ultimately, I feel like that's up, up to you and your community. If you feel like you're getting plenty of tours in, um, you know, maybe you don't necessarily need to host an open house if you have a long waiting list and you're getting tours scheduled regularly. An open house is more of, you know, an, an alternative marketing approach to gather a big group of people together. Obviously, you know, a parent ambassador is much more likely to come and give a statement or testimonial and help you out at a big event like an open house. They're not going to be able to come into every individualized tour. So it's really up to you and what kind of experiences you want to offer to prospective families. Um, I know some schools have stopped offering open houses. Rachel says, we host, we host three open houses events a year, encourage parents to bring their child along. It's a great way for us to meet the child before the official visit day and see how they experience a Montessori classroom. Absolutely. Another thing you can do for parent education is of course, offer parenting courses. Um, this is a way for parents to just receive additional um, value from your school and have a deeper understanding of Montessori. And hopefully this will encourage them to stay in programs for longer. So things like parenting nights, which I really feel that should focus on what Montessori is, as well as what Montessori, how Montessori can be brought into the home. This way they can see those benefits firsthand. Um, always provide parents with resources they can use, whether that's, you know, a list of, of books they can read, a simple, you know, um, there's a, a really good mistaken school chart that you can offer younger parents. Uh, parents of younger children, things like that, that you can just give out and hand out the Montessori answered one pagers, things like this, you can answer um, some frequently asked questions. 
provide um, applicable practices. So what can a parent do when their kid's having a tantrum? What can a parent do if their kid, if they're experiencing power struggles? What is a Montessori approach and solution to that? And hopefully they can apply these things and see this is, you know, this this is working and this is what my child is experiencing in the classroom as well. They wouldn't necessarily be experiencing that in a different setting because it's a different approach. And you can always come up with fun and unique ways to get families involved and show and know that still there's not going to be um, a full attendance at any event, but it's great to offer these things as just additional resources for families. I see here, Sarah, it's a nice opportunity for parents to share their experience and for the parent to touch some materials in regards to the open house. Absolutely. Um, and then Lindsay says, we started doing open houses during the weekday evenings, but limited to two families per time slot since we got feedback that prospective parents want to see the classrooms in action and don't want to be too disruptive to our classroom environments. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like seeing a Montessori classroom in action. <laughs> that is a very good point. Um, some samples of parenting courses you can offer that I think that, um, you know, if you're looking for ideas or inspiration uh, are good. Things like planes of development. This is great for all ages because that way parents can understand what their child needs and what their interests are going to really lean towards through every stage of life and development. So this applies to toddlers all the way up to upper elementary. Um, it's important for parents to have a deeper understanding of what their child needs from a developmental standpoint. Again, this is something that we in Montessori um, really understand and that's how we center our educational approach based on what the child needs whereas in a traditional setting it might be a lot more standardized so we can talk about that and hopefully that can kind of another plant another seed for retention positive discipline is another great one because this gives parents um, things that they can practice in their own home so they can see the value of montessori firsthand how to handle tantrums this is a great one to offer to um, parents of toddlers uh, the prepared adult is another great one uh, and then the Montessori home environment, how families can um, create an environment that aids, you know, development and independence in their own home. If you have any any other courses that you offer at your school, feel free to share. You can unmute yourself or, or comment. There's really a variety of courses that you can offer that will help you build a stronger and more educated community. Do you need parenting courses? If you're a Montessori Thrive member or need a marketing member, um, you can actually download a variety of Montessori parenting courses and workshops. We have a variety of course templates for your Montessori, for you on Montessori Thrive. You can download them, you can make edits, and you can use them to give parenting classes if you don't have the time to create the slide content. I know that could be time consuming. So we have a couple on there. Another thing you can do that will actually aid retention is to host parent socials. I think off the back of uh, COVID-19, a lot of people are craving community, especially when it comes to raising children. It really does take a village and it helps to be a part of a community that's well-connected and parents feel like they can make friends and build connections. So you can host events that are purely about socializing, things like book clubs, you know, a parenting book club where parents can come together, have a snack and talk about a parenting book all together and and eventually that will lead to other conversations and friendships hopefully coffee meets i've heard of a school that does this um during carpool right before parents go to work they offer free coffee and a and a spot for parents to park their car and chat um for a couple minutes before they head out to work uh potlucks you can host a potluck maybe once a year for parents to get to know each other and and just you know talk over food and drink uh, fairs and festivals are also a great opportunity to invite the whole family and people can interact with one another. Um, so that's also great. You can also set up parent committees in the family uh, for families who love being involved in helping the school community so that they can plan this so that you as an administrator don't have to do everything because <laughs> I know a lot is on our plate already. Um, so, you know, if there's a parent who's, that's really involved and would love to help in planning and overseeing these events, you can kind of offboard that. I'd love to hear if there's any other social events you host in your community that have been beneficial and have helped you build a stronger community. Another thing you can do is, um, and this might be for those parents preparing to enter that um, kindergarten year or that third year or transitioning to, um, you know, from primary to lower elementary is doing things like moving up nights. 
I see her in the chat. I want to read this out. We host an ice cream social at the start of the school year. See, th that's just a great idea. It's a fun event and it just gives people an opportunity to come together. That's the thing. If parents have a lot of friends in your community and um, they feel connected, they're less likely to leave and, and, and more likely to consider hopefully staying in your programs for longer. I see here, Sarah, we have a community committee second year and they have been um, instrumental in helping to build back community after COVID. Uh, having a, a parent committee or a community com committee is a great idea. Um, and then Sarah says, we host a night market uh, in late May with crafts. The students make uh, for sale with an emphasis on Latin culture, with dancing, music, and food. That's really wonderful. It's also very Montessori to, <laughs> to, to do a market on, on things that they've made. I think that's great of tying, you know, a community effort into a Montessori um, activity. Sarah says, parents really love international nights and they are unique to Montessori. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's always great. We, we have families of all cultural backgrounds in our communities and it's, it's nice to celebrate that diversity in a social setting where people can come together and learn from one another. It's great for the students too. Rachel here says, we do moving up events for each level prior to re-enrollment season. We also host a curriculum tour where the students from every grade present a Montessori material to parents. It helps the parents see how Montessori can work from preschool up to eighth grade. I love the idea of the child showing the parent how to use that material because that's very much what a child would be doing in their final year in that three-year cycle. So it really allows them to see that. Katie says, we're hosting a coffee and conversations a few mornings this month, specifically targeted to families that are transitioning to the next level. That's great. So there's specific like retention socials. We have a toddler to primary morning, a primary to elementary, lower to upper L. For children moving to middle school, we have an evening open house for the upper L families to learn about the middle school program. That's great. Um, Camilla, can I jump in real quick? I wanted to oh. mention something that my um, former school did too. Very low maintenance. I know as being a school administrator that we have a lot of on our plates. Um, we would put up a game night and it was very informal. We would have hot chocolate and popcorn and children could come. It was meant for our like kindergarten to elementary children um, and they could bring a board game or we had games at the school and it was just come and play games and have hot chocolate and popcorn. Um, and it was just a fun social, and it was focused on retention. We targeted it to our kindergarten and those second year children um, to come and check out our elementary to hopefully stay for elementary. Absolutely. That's a very easy uh, gathering to plan for as well. <laughs> the last thing we want to do is, you know, put too much on our plate. <laughs> We're already so busy. Um, but yes, having moving up nights or those socials specifically centered around retention can really be helpful. So I think when people get together and talk about it, they can encourage each other to go on a journey together. They know they're not alone. They can ask questions and they can see the, the real value behind it. Um, so again, you can invite student or parent ambassadors to these nights. Um, you can have people that have already made that transition come and, and answer questions for parents ready for that next chapter. You can provide families with a packet of information about what they can expect from that next chapter, what would happen if a family chooses to leave. You can talk about, you know, the offboarding process of a family, you know, if a family does decide to go to public school, what they can expect, you know, most likely their child will be not as challenged in um, a traditional school setting as they would in a Montessori classroom. So you can talk about how to prepare for that. Um, and then bonus, um, another thing is you can offer free childcare on these nights if you're hosting evening events so the parents actually show up. I always suggest trying to make your events as accessible as possible. I hear, uh, I see here, Sylvia, we have been hosting a lot of parent partnership events this year. Hopefully that will help with retention. It's always great to see as well, you know, how, how they actually end up working in terms of numbers. Does it help retain those families? Do you lose less families through these retention events? It's always great to get feedback to see, you know, those families who do end up leaving, what's what's the main reason? Is it purely a cost-driven decision or do they just feel like it wasn't worth the value? And if that's the case, how can you, you know, provide more value to these parents in the future so that they can hopefully, you know, if they're walking away, it's mostly a cost-related decision and not so much a value-related decision. 
Um, I also think it's great to just offer, you know, a, an event calendar. You can do this at the beginning of every year so that parents can prepare. You can do fun um, events and events specifically that are, you know, more like parent classes. Um, this is just a sample from Hollis Montessori School. Um, Camille um, offered these um, a while back, and they're a great resource or a great example of, you know, the different types of events that you can offer. Again, some of these are more about learning and another is more about um, just having fun and connecting with the community and, and building a, a stronger community. These are just some samples because if you're looking for, you know, a, a slideshow presentation to present at these moving up nights, if you're hosting an actual class or a course, um, we have these available on Montessori Thrive. This one was contributed by Child View Montessori. It's a really good presentation about moving up to the kindergarten year and what a parent can expect. You can download it and edit it. But um, we have, you know, a comparison of, you know, what they're going to experience in the Montessori classroom, what they're going to experience in the traditional classroom so that a parent can weigh the, the pros and cons and see, you know, okay, the, there's actually value in, in staying for that third year. Um, again, reiterating that they're going to flourish and really come together in that final year of the three-year cycle. Here are just some more examples from that presentation slide. It's a great presentation. So um, if you're a member of Montessori Thrive, you can always download that, tweak it, add your own pictures or edit it, but the content is all there for you. Um, but I, I recommend doing this if, if you're really struggling with keeping those parents on for the third year is, is inviting them to a parent night to discuss, you know, that, that final year. Um, I know some of you already shared some wonderful ideas, but if there's anyone else who wants to share, if there are any events or courses that have been beneficial to your school and community when it comes to retention, feel free to drop those in the chat. Um, I'm sure that it will help uh, someone else on this call get some ideas. We've been exchanging some really good ones, so that's great. You can also just offer some additional resources, and these are resources that you don't necessarily have to create yourself because that's a lot of work. Um, you can create these things once, um, like a book list. You don't have to go out and write a book, but you can, you know, take a couple minutes to write a book list and you can post this or share it with families. Parenting videos as well. Again, they don't have to be yours. It doesn't have to be your content. If it is, then great. If not, you can just share a great parenting uh, video that you find online on your socials, or you can share it in a newsletter and say, this is some great content. Um, podcasts or some great Montessori podcasts out there that you can recommend to families. Blogs, whether you've written them or you found them somewhere else. Um, creating newsletters, uh, social media posts, and also your parent handbook. You can offer some additional resources on there for parents who are interested in learning more about Montessori. Um, I see her in the chat. Thank you, Grace. And of course, always look to improve. I think it's great to ask parents to fill out surveys to see, you know, why did they choose to leave during that kindergarten year? So you can get that feedback in writing and you can see what changes you need to make. Again, if it's purely a cost-driven decision, you know, you have to find some strategies about really bringing forth the value because ultimately if a parent is really sold on the value, you know, they'll try to make the sacrifices so that their children can really complete the program and reap the full benefits. Um, so again, when you get that feedback, it allows you to see what needs improving. Um, so I recommend, you know, putting together a short survey, something like five questions could be enough as to if a parent is is um, is leaving, why did they make that decision? Is it because they're relocating? Is it because they didn't feel like, you know, they had a good experience with your school or is it cost driven? I see here, Sarah, we host a Montessori discovery just um just a Saturday morning where parents come in to get lessons from children's house up through upper elementary. Parents always ask for it to be longer. We also have a what is Montessori in elementary nights every December. So parents of students who would be moving up to elementary can have a special night dedicated to their questions and information about how Montessori differs from public school. We have a record number um, of students move up to first year um, and last year after that. Absolutely. Because even one, even just one meeting or or, or um, event to show people firsthand what the differences are can make a huge impact on um, those re-enrollment rates or those moving up rates. I think another thing you can do is you can really talk about 
um, how that how that child will still leave Montessori prepared for the next chapter. I think that's a fear that a lot of families experience when it comes to Montessori because it's not the traditional approach. So just reassuring these families that um, the curriculum that we cover in Montessori is very valuable and it's going to, you know, it's advanced and it, it's not just a free for all in the classroom against smashing those misconceptions. And usually the children that leave our programs are usually overprepared <laughs> for the traditional or public school programs and they're not challenged enough. I see oh, here. Um, we, we had one thing um, set a couple of years back where we um, had a panel of past alumni who are high schoolers, sophomores and juniors and one senior to talk about their experience at school and actually all of them had gone to uh, the, our kindergarten and talked about how they really felt like they were big wigs and leaders in the classroom and really felt like that was something that stayed with them. Uh, I have to say we had, you know, a good number of parents who remained for kindergarten that year. I mean, they were almost like I would like my child to be like that child. And it was just kind of a showing of how responsible they were. They spoke well. It was just a... Um, very helpful. I think firsthand experience is always a plus. Absolutely. It, it, that it really is so impactful for them to see that. And I like that mm -hmm. um, you said, that's what I want my future child to be is, is a Montessori child, someone who's very capable, independent, a leader. Absolutely. Um, again, additional resources, we have things like marketing content, we have those parent education resources, retention specific presentations and commitment forms are all available on Thrive. If you have any questions about our resource collection, please email me. I'll go ahead and drop my email here in the chat. Um, you can email me about the town, asking questions about the town halls or um, any of our resources, I'm happy to help. I also just want to mention that in February, we're going to be back with our virtual parenting series. So those of you who are Montessori Thrive members, every Wednesday um, from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be coming together for a parenting session. Um, we have some great speakers next month, and we look forward to inviting your families. Um, if you're a Thrive member school, this will be free to your parent community. So we look forward to seeing them there. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can also reach out to me via email. All right. Um, are there any more questions or comments before we wrap up? I don't want to keep you on too long as this is, I know you guys are, are busy. <laughs> I see you in the chat. Thank you. Next week, we're going to be, it's kind of a similar event in the sense that it's going to really be focused on in the background about retention, but we're going to be talking next week about really communicating the value of um, our curriculum and our programs to parents um, in a sense of, you know, what are they learning academically? How is that going to carry on later in their life? How is that going to prepare them for future programs and how to communicate that? Because that's that's a bit of an of a struggle for us when it comes to Montessori marketing is we want to make sure that parents understand that we are going to be challenging our students. They're going to be also re receiving rigorous um, curriculum. And, you know, we want to communicate that in the right way. So we'll be covering that next week. So if you're interested in that, I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I hope you got some great ideas. Thank you so much for everyone who joined the call and shared their strategies and ideas. It was really great. Bye, everyone.